Welcome to Morning Joe with Tom, with your host, Thomas Chappelle. Get ready to listen to real-life stories from inspiring leaders who have overcome incredible challenges to rise to the occasion. If you're ready to add some pep to your morning with a new outlook on leadership, then grab your cup of coffee. It's time to be inspired. Here's your host, Thomas Chappelle. Dr. Kayvon, how you doing? Hello, hi, how are you doing, Tom? Oh, doing great. Yes, you know, good to see you again. Good to see you again, and uh, really enjoyed that uh, class that you uh, was sharing with us the other day. So that, oh. that was awesome. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I'm, I'm glad that was helpful. I Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So that my listeners know, uh, we actually met through you and Sean Mize doing yes. a project together. Yes. And I'm connected with Sean. So uh, I got to be a participant as a viewer and kind of learn some of the method to your madness. Yes. Uh, and that's how we kind of met. And then yes, I, yes, Sean is awesome. I really enjoyed that conversation that we had with him. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. And I noticed that you kind of have these bi-weekly to weekly uh, yes. meetups. Uh, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so it all started um, me remembering a, something that I have learned a few years ago, but, you know, haven't, uh, didn't take action on it, which was... Um, the part of the business that we can continuously doing because there is value in consistency to grow our business. And it's going to be different for different people. So the question mm -hmm. was, um, think about the activities in your business, everything mm -hmm. that you do. Yes. And if there is one of them that you can only do that thing and nothing else for the rest of your life, what is that one thing that that limitation is not only not limiting, but also good news. You say, oh, you, you mean I get to do this for the rest of the business, for the rest of our life? I don't have to worry about anything else. So what is that activity? So um, did anything come to your mind as I just asked that? Yeah, um, I, I think what it was, was that uh, I'm more of a strategic individual that likes uh -huh. to combine technology and all. So, uh, what I saw was that you provided several different frameworks mm, that yes. I thought that, you know, with just a little bit of massaging yes, is adaptable to, to a lot of people's situations. Yes, exactly. So, so when I was, when I was uh, confronted with that question, the answer that came to my mind was uh, learning and teaching. Mm -hmm. So I, I always love to learn from so many different topics and connect the dots and come up with something. So that presentation that you saw, the business frameworks, was from that because I call them business frameworks, but some of them are from mind models, some of them are from sales strategies, from different. But but I noticed this common pattern, common trend among all of them that you have a structure that it can apply to different situations. So I don't have to solve the same kind of problem over and over. If we are able to apply patterns and see, ah, this mm -hmm. situation here is similar to that. So for those situations, we have this kind of a <laughs> response. So if this, then that. If this, then the other thing. So uh, suddenly, uh, when we see the patterns, um, resolving the issues becomes easier. So I call them business frameworks. If, if for example, um, one of the frameworks that I, I like is... Uh, in communication, consider the storytelling aspects of it. So, yes. um, um, like a good book about that is Pitch Anything. And another one is The Story Brand by Donald Miller. They talk about, you know, how you speak. So y what your message is being heard through the um, structure of a story. So because that's there, that's now a framework. What is it I want to do? I need to communicate. So is that a podcast interview? Is that a webinar? Is that a social media post? Whatever is the communication, you want to simplify it through framework. So a story needs these, 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 this, 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 this element in this order. So now it becomes a framework of filling the blank. Right. So how did you come about recognizing these patterns and, and all? I know you're, you've got a yes. strong technology background, but where was it yes. that kind of really started all this 
Oh, um, you know how we have uh, different, I guess, talents or mm. skills? You know, like, for example, you, uh, you have met people that they are very good with numbers in, in their head. My brother is like that, and he pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't tell him. <laughs> yeah, we go, no, he knows. We go to a store and there is like a 40% sale. And on top of that, there is another 23% and his brain, like he knows what, like, how do you do that? I am good with numbers as long as, you know, there's a calculator. <laughs> so <laughs> some people, different people are comfortable with different things. So what I noticed many, many years ago, actually, when I was a, like a young teenager, that I noticed uh, that I noticed trends and patterns in everyday life more than other people. That's how my brain makes sense of the world around me through patterns. Uh, you know, the history repeats itself kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And long-term, short-term people win this, then that. And that's how I ended up keep looking at the, at the world. Then later in later years, um, when I had my own business and I'm reading, you know, uh, business books and I'm taking courses and I'm practicing and, and doing that, I, I kept noticing patterns and trends. That's actually how I went to, you know, from university. I, we were talking about this before I studied medicine. Then I decided mm -hmm. I want to get into, you know, programming and internet and uh, web design and that sort of thing. So uh, I moved from medicine to web design, to programming, to marketing, and now business growth. And all of that was be, uh, through recognizing the next pattern that emerged either in customer language feedback or my interest. So following these patterns, that's how I have been finding my way through through this whole thing. Absolutely. But, you know, I, I would kind of say that, I would almost say that you're more like a futurist kind of individual, that you see that trend as it's coming in, because I've said for a long time that a business person is no longer going to be able to just be a business person. They got to uh -huh. be part technologist, strategist, futurist, accountant, you know, all these things because yes. technology is going to do a lot of it for them, but they got to understand how that they cut, they got yes. to the position that they're in. So I think the technology, um, either, well, let's call it the old technology and the new technology, yeah. you know, the regular technology that we had before databases and now AI, they're both, well, here's another pattern. They're both only enhancers. They can't replace, mm -hmm. or at least at this stage, because you and I, just before this call, we were talking about wisdom. So what we are talking about is connecting the dots in a new way. Yes. And that's what something that we can do, as you said, with a little bit of an accounting and something that we have learned over there and we bring, um, you know, from different disciplines to each other and apply what we have learned over there, over here as well. Mm -hmm. um, we end up, uh, connecting the dots in a new way. That's the innovation part of it. Now that with the help of technology, that can be um, exaggerated. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So what are some of the most critical challenges that leaders face that when they uh, get with you, you help solve? Right. Um, I noticed that we, not just leaders, again, mm -hmm. pattern, um, we make things com more complicated than they need to be. <laughs> uh, I agree. <laughs> right? So, so my first, my, that's what I see, that they talk about the issue, but they go all over the place and they connect issues that they're not related or even factors that they're not relevant anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and it becomes a complicated situation in, in their mind. And th because they are so close to it, it's hard for them to distinguish between relevant and irrelevant and that sort of thing. So as, as a coach consultant, I have the advantage of, you know, the external vantage point mm -hmm. of, of, of see, oh, that that's not related. Why this? And asking a few quest qualifying questions and suddenly we start clarifying um, what's not related anymore or not what's not relevant anymore, doesn't apply anymore and um, simplifying the question. So um, I always say what I do is coaching or consulting, but what I really do, I help people get out of their own way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, it sounds like that you uh, challenge their thinking, but you also hold up a mirror of the perspective. Correct. Yes. Let me give you an example. Are you familiar with the um, framework or the idea called sunk cost? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So um, for for our listeners, just a quick reminder: sunk cost is some some cost that we spend on some topic, but it was in the past, and it's not relevant to current situation anymore. But our brain still connects that. It's like if you and I are going to a concert together, and we we not get notification that the, our our uh, what is it favorite singer is not coming. Somebody is going to replace him, and we don't like the new person. We have a choice. Do we still go because we paid three hundred dollars a ticket, or, yeah. <laughs> or, or you know, because we already paid a good amount of money for it, or we don't go? But but what I'm saying is, whether we go or not, that money is spent and gone already. Mm -hmm. It never comes back. We, if we go back there, it's not is our investment is going to give us some ROI. No, it's a matter of. So, okay, so the next two or three hours, are we going to have fun together or are we going to go to a concert just because we paid for it and not have fun, right? So that's a sunk cost. It's gone. Forget about it. It's not relevant anymore. That's an example of, of the type mm -hmm. of conversation that I have with leaders. Okay. Yes. So what are the outcomes that they have after that they work from with you? Right. Um, they think uh, the outcome is being able to make a decision. Okay. But one of the, one of my latest conversations, the, the, the person saw through that and, and said it eloquently. Um, when you get clarity, the decision is obvious. So there is no decision making anymore, right? <laughs> so the, what is the outcome? The outcome is clarity. Absolutely. That is, yeah. that is so key. That yes. is so key. So, I've really enjoyed our conversation thus far. Um, Same here. You know, what are some of the things that if somebody wants to reach out to you, how would right. they go about doing that? Oh, um, I am everywhere on social media at Dr. Kayvon K. Um, it's the one at the right here, this corner. Okay. okay. <laughs> yep. That's that's the same in on Instagram or Facebook or now we they just launched threads so on threads so it's the same handle that i have everywhere um my website is uh, profitfindernow.com um and usually it's one of those mobile friendly link tree kind of a thing so it's always the latest uh, things are are posted there and in uh you know all of the social media links so that's the easiest way to reach out to me either through at dr k or um, profitfindernow.com Okay. And so I like to kind of leave the listeners with something. Uh, what's the latest and greatest book that you have read or podcast that you have uh, listened to that you think that leaders should really be listening or reading? Okay. Uh, and it can be your own. Uh, well, uh, I do have a book. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, well, I think my book is it's called Simplify extreme effectiveness for entrepreneurs. So there are a lot of effectiveness um, advice that I have, uh, again, gathered from a bunch of places and I put in there and I put my own twist on it and that sort of thing. Because I think as a leader, we don't need to be efficient. We need to be effective. So that's mm -hmm. why I wanted to write a book about effectiveness, even though it's a, in the category of productivity and all of that. But usually people think product, mean, productivity means efe efficiency. But I mean... Effectiveness comes first because we need to do the right thing before we're able to do the wrong thing really fast. <laughs> yep. Could you just but, drill, take just take a couple of minutes and drill in the that a little bit more? Yes, of course. So uh, productivity has two parts, effectiveness and efficiency. Okay. Effectiveness is doing the right things. Okay. Doesn't matter how fast or slow, it's doing the right things. Efficiency means doing things right. So cheaper, easier, faster, and all of that. So effectiveness, doing the right things. Efficiency, doing things right. Productivity is doing the right things right. So <laughs> that's my wordplay. There that. you go. <laughs> there you go, listeners. That's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so the idea is that we all, leader or not, we always have to start with effectiveness. Because as I mentioned before, uh, if we don't do the right, if we don't find out what the right thing to do is, we get very efficient in doing the wrong things really fast. And we don't want to do that. <laughs> so first we have to make it work. Then we make it work better. Then we make it work faster. 
So um, the uh, the mistake or or t tendency is to jump to making it faster, easier, cheaper. You know, the uh, a question that uh, is usually asked prematurely is, yeah, but is it scalable? Yeah, but is it scalable? I don't know yet. Let's see if it works at all or not. <laughs> but then we get to scalability later. No, that kind of thing. Th does that answer your question? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I really appreciate your time today. And uh, if I'm going to give you the last uh, the last remarks for the show today. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, you, you asked me about a book. Uh, um, a book that I recommend is about uh, this inner challenges of, of leadership that I recently read. I have read a bunch of books about that. But okay. this one I, that is most recent one I like is called The Mountain is You. Ooh. Yes, The Mountain is You. It's all oh. about self-sabotage. And uh, if I want to uh, leave our listeners with something, I would say, write this down or maybe on a post-it note and put it somewhere. Done is better than better. Mm -hmm. Done is better than better. You know, it's, it's waiting for tomorrow to make it you know, better and faster and more perfect. No, no, no. Just send it out there. There is time for that later. So done is better than better. That's something that I have been saying for years now and has helped myself from myself many, many times too. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, Dr. K, I just want to let the listeners know that you do do coaching and you have a coaching advisory consulting yes. practice. And uh, I'm going to get that information and put it into the show notes for them to be able to reach out to you. Yes. And I thank you so much for all that you've done. And thank you for being such a blessing to my listeners today. My absolute pleasure. This this was a fantastic conversation. I, I really had a good time. Thank you very much. We Tom. could have gone on much more. I, <laughs> I, I, I really feel like it. So you have a great day. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening to Morning Joe with Tom. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode. See you next time for more real-life stories and inspiration on Morning Joe with Tom.